hopefully a best case, not a worst case, and that's what we're working for. As always, we're going to focus on the facts. Here are some of the latest developments. A somber President Trump says the crisis is not under control. But the White House says there is no national quarantine plan, despite rumors to the contrary. Stocks take another tumble, the Dow Jones diving nearly 3,000 points. And the president says we are close to a recession, but some experts say we're already there. KTLS John Finolio with the latest. I gained seven thousand dollars in my sushi place. In America. Inside or go home. As the number of coronavirus cases surges, President Trump is now urging the public to bunker down for a while. We'll see what happens, but they think uh, August could be July, could be longer than that. Four to five months, maybe longer, of avoiding non-essential public places, work, and school according to new White House guidelines. My administration is recommending that all Americans, including the young and healthy, work to engage in schooling from home when possible, avoid gathering in groups of more than 10 people, avoid discretionary travel, and avoid eating and drinking at bars, restaurants, and public food courts. More than 1,000 new infections across the country in the last 24 hours. More than 4,000 confirmed cases and growing at least 80 people have died. The president's assessment sending stocks tumbling, the Dow losing almost three. <laughs> Actually, I don't know where that's going มาตัดตัดเป็นตาตาสมาสัมปะตะนมตะสะเป็นตาตาสมาสัมปะตะนมตะสะกะตาตาสมาสัมปะตะนมตะสะกะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะ
Slipper. I thought there was going to be a big, huge line. So it's a new system, so we got to try it out, see how it works. Um, I like it. Like it was much less time spent. And all you had to do is punch some buttons and that was it. Yeah, I came up in the elevator, waited about five minutes in line, and everybody was so helpful. And I, the touch screen was really great. And the centers close at 8 o'clock, but I want to give you some perspective on the numbers we're talking about here. Of all of the states in Super Tuesday, L.A. County has a larger population than all of them, save one, that being Texas. And also, if you add to that, that the fact that any mail-in ballot that was postmarked by today and arrives before Friday will also be counted, well, that just tells you that it could be a while before we know the final results. We'll keep you posted. Live in Norwalk, I'm Christy Fajardo. Let's send it back to you. All right, thanks, Christy. Yeah, for the date, April 2nd, in terms of the... Could be that long. long cut off. Yeah. Maybe. All right, well, a closely watched race tonight is the battle for the 25th Congressional District. 13 candidates competing to take over Katie Hill's open seat in the House. One of those candidates is Democrat Christy Smith. CBS 2's Sarah Donchi is live at her campaign headquarters in Stevenson Ray. Christy, or I should say Sarah. Well, Jeff, this is where uh, Christy Smith's campaign is hoping to have a victory celebration tonight, and they have been very optimistic. Uh, Christy Smith has been in and out of this room for the better part of the last few hours. And let me show you some video that we have. Uh, we've been speaking to some staffers on her campaign who believe that this will go to a runoff, but that Smith will at least be one of the top two. The historic field of candidates is now a battle between moderate and progressive Democrats for the nation's top job. I can't believe this turnout. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I am ending my campaign and endorsing Joe Biden for president. We have found that leader in Vice President, soon to be President Joe Biden. Let's do it for Joe! I warned you I was coming back and I'm back. I'm back. And now we have the Super Tuesday in Virginia. Moderate Democrats swarming Joe Biden with support over the last 24 hours. Will it be enough to stop a Sanders surge? We are live across the country tonight with results from California to the nation's capital. Here at home, we have reporters spanning SoCal, watching and waiting for the numbers to come in. We've got team coverage on our local races and propositions, as well as national races to watch tonight. We begin with Glenn Walker here live in studio, following the numbers across the nation already coming in tonight. Glenn. Mike is shared, this is a big night, 1,357 delegates up for grabs. That is a full 34% of all delegates. Senator Bernie Sanders, of course, the front runner before tonight. But Joe Biden, boy, is he on a hot streak. Let's take a look at the early numbers. This is the latest from Alabama, where Joe Biden is the projected winner. Now to Arkansas, where 31 delegates are up for grabs. And Joe Biden uh, with the lead over Bernie Sanders. It looks like Joe Biden with just 2% of the vote. At this point, but it looks like he will take the state of Arkansas. Here's the uh, early results from the state of Maine. And again, it is Joe Biden with about a 2% lead over Bernie Sanders. As for Massachusetts, where Elizabeth Warren uh, is fighting for the lead in her home state. This one, uh, way too close to call at this point. But again, she is in third place at this point, trailing Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden. Not in Minnesota, where the polls closed. Just a couple of minutes ago, uh, too early to tell at this point. We'll get back to that state a little bit later. Now to North Carolina. Joe Biden projected to win here, a commanding lead over Bernie Sanders and Mike Bloomberg. The numbers out of the uh, state of Oklahoma, the Sooner State, and at this point, uh, Joe Biden also with a very comfortable lead over Bernie Sanders and Mike Bloomberg. A tight race in Tennessee where that big tornado hit uh, earlier this morning, Bernie Sanders over Mike Bloomberg at this point, way too close to call. Joe Biden third place, not that far behind. Now to the Lone Star State, Texas. Bernie Sanders with a pretty comfortable lead at this point over Joe Biden with 21% of the vote in. As for the uh, state of Vermont, of course, this is Bernie Sanders' uh, home state. Uh, the projected winner here very easily, 52% of the vote in. And Bernie Sanders with 51.7% of the vote. Joe Biden, a distance, 22.1% of the vote. Elizabeth Warren coming up in third place. Now to Virginia, this is a big, big win for Joe Biden, who has taken a big majority in that state's Democratic primary. Mike Bloomberg spent heavily, expected to be a factor in this race. 
Biden, talk about cost effective, he spent $300,000 in the state of Virginia compared to Bloomberg, who spent a whopping $18 million. Now, he is in South Florida tonight at his campaign headquarters for the evening, and just a short time ago, Bloomberg was talking to his supporters and says he is still in it to win it. This is a campaign for change, a campaign for sanity, for honesty, a campaign for inclusion, compassion, competence, and a campaign for human decency. And this is a campaign to bring our country back together and put the United back in the United States of America. So you're probably wondering why is Bloomberg in Florida? They're not part of Super Tuesday. Well, Florida voters, he's trying to sway them. They began early voting this week. 219 delegates up for grabs in the Sunshine State. We, of course, will continue to watch these races and bring you uh, all the results as they roll in. But as far as, uh, you know, Mr. Biden tonight, it looks like uh, Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg dropping out of the race and supporting him has certainly made a big difference tonight so far. Yeah. All right, Glenn, thank you so much. There are also many key races at stake across the nation tonight. Of people who are making it clear every day they will not tolerate the grotesque level of income and wealth inequality we are experiencing. We will not give tax breaks to billionaires when a half a million Americans sleep out of the streets. We will not allow 49% of all new income to go to the 1% when half of our people live paycheck to paycheck. Now, I don't know what's going to happen later tonight. We're doing well in Texas right now. We won Colorado. And I'm cautiously optimistic that later in the evening, we can win the largest state in this country, the state of California. <laughs> campaign and I don't know what will happen but if it comes out to be a campaign in which we have one candidate who is standing up for the working class and the middle class we're gonna win that election and if we have another candidate who has received contributions from at least 60 billionaires we're gonna win that election and if there is another candidate in the race who is spending hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, we're going to tell him, in America, you cannot buy elections. Minnesota because of Andy Gorbachev. <laughs> we're doing well in Texas because of Ben O'Rourke. And that's why, that's why I was so proud so incredibly proud to have Mayor Pete's endorsement as well. There's a man of character, intellect, and courage. And by the way, I was proud to be endorsed by Jim Clyburn. Man, he is something else. Look, our campaign reflects the diversity of this party and this nation. And that's how it should be. Because we need to bring everybody along. Everybody. We want a nominee who will beat Donald Trump. But also, also keep Nancy Pelosi the Speaker of the House. Win back the United States Senate. If that's what you want, join us. And if you want a nominee who's a Democrat, a lifelong Democrat, a proud Democrat, an Obama-Biden Democrat, join us. Trump has, fled, has, has fanned the flames of hate and sought to divide us. He's insulted, demonized, and actually just, just the way he talks about people. 
He has not a single sense of empathy. He doesn't have any compassion. No regard for the values that made this country who we are. Not the way you were raised by your moms and dads. He looks at honesty and decency and respect and he views it as a sign of weakness. He doesn't believe that we're the beacon to the world. He doesn't believe we're all part of something bigger than ourselves. That's why I've said from the moment I announced to this candidacy. We live He's going to walk away the projected winner in Arkansas. In Colorado, let's take a look at the numbers there. Bernie Sanders is the projected winner there with Mike Bloomberg taking 23%. So that's good news for him there. Uh, actually coming in second with Joe Biden in third there on in Colorado. Let's go to Maine now where we've got 24 delegates up for grabs there. Joe Biden with 34% and uh, Bernie Sanders close behind with 33.6% each getting six delegates out of, uh, well, yeah, out of the 67 delegates there. Sorry, Massachusetts, that was in Maine, so there are 24 uh, delegates there. Let's go to Massachusetts now. Massachusetts polls are reporting the following numbers, 34% for Joe Biden. He's projected to win there with Bernie Sanders at 27%. Elizabeth Warren making a showing there and been able to keep nine of those delegates with 19.9%. And one to highlight here would you look at this in Minnesota. This is the home state of Amy Klobuchar, who just dropped out of the race and threw her support behind Joe Biden. Consider this, coming into this race today, before Klobuchar decided to bow out, Bernie Sanders was actually running a very close second to Amy Klobuchar. She steps out, puts her support behind Joe Biden, and look what it has done. It has propelled him to a very important victory in Minnesota tonight. Now to North Carolina and another big win for Joe Biden tonight. The projected winner there, 59% of the precincts reporting. Joe Biden with nearly 40% of the vote in North Carolina. And here is the latest from Oklahoma, where Joe Biden has won with 38% uh, of the vote, getting 15 delegates there out of the... My Bloomberg will be out. Bernie Sanders at 25.2%, Mike Bloomberg making a showing, but not getting that magic number, the 15% that he needs, uh, with 96% of the polls reporting on that one. In Tennessee now, let's go to those numbers and see who's the projected winner. Joe Biden, also the projected winner in Tennessee with... 41.7%. Bernie Sanders behind at 24.6%. But Mike Bloomberg able to get that 15% uh, needed to have a... a when they have green on the top, that means we know. Out of that one is not, we know yet. Second biggest prize tonight, the state of Texas. This has been very, very close. Joe Biden, uh, seeing this obviously as critical spending late last I think, uh, night in Dallas before making... Trump will win on Texas. Bernie Sanders, though, with the lead, it is still early tonight in Texas, just 14% of the precincts, but at this point, Bernie Sanders is looking good. Now to the results from Utah, where Bernie Sanders uh, had been polling well, and that is bearing out in the numbers tonight. Mike Bloomberg with a strong showing in the polls leading into Super Tuesday, and that being borne out as well with his numbers at 18%. So again, over that 15%. But Bernie Sanders uh, with the lead tonight in the state of Utah. And let's go to the home state of uh, Bernie Sanders at, in Vermont, where he got 51.1% of the vote. The clear winner here, uh, getting 11 delegates uh, in Vermont. And Joe Biden trailing behind, uh, getting uh, only five delegates there. Elizabeth Warren unable to uh, make that 15%. And we already have 89% of the polling places reporting. In Virginia, this is a, another delegate-rich state, mm. 99 delegates yeah. up for grabs, and uh, Tim Kaine, Senator Tim Kaine, gave uh, a, a, a big, possibly uh, could give him a big boost there, Joe Biden, now the winner in Virginia. He was, uh, he actually uh, endorsed him, Senator Tim Kaine, and they were hoping for that boost that Clyburn gave him in South Carolina, and there you see it, Joe Biden winning Virginia. And that is a big one under his belt. Our special election coverage on this Super Tuesday continues. <laughs> We're going to have a live update on the long polling lines here in Los Angeles. We'll be right back.